What's up, everyone? What's up, live channel? I shaved. Couldn't take it anymore. Oh, boy. Okay, I came on to um, do a poll here. I want to know how many people actually saw that Whiplash movie that everyone is so mad uh, at me about, which uh, I think is hilarious. Um, okay, who is who saw Whiplash? Nope. What's up, Ron? HK, unfortunately, you saw it. <laughs> HK. Uh, Johnny Interval, what's up? You finally caught me. You did not see it. You're not you're mad at me, but you really liked it. The beard is not going. Never hears of it. No idea what I'm talking about. Sorry, not yet. Okay, so fortunately, I saw it. Okay. Um, so the other day, I was... Uh, Adam's video came up in my suggestion feed and I was like, what's he doing a video on? He's, and I, I watched the video and he's like whiplash. And then a Adam says, Oh, I haven't watched yet. You know, it, he was watching it after four years, which means that when it first came out, and of course he doesn't say this. His first impression is, well, why would I want to watch this movie? So then, so then I thought, okay, I'm going to call some of my friends. So I said, I called my brother John and I said, John, you see that movie with Whiplash? He said, no, why would I want to watch that movie? I couldn't find one of my friends. I have a lot of friends. Not one that had seen it. None. Zero. Um, so obviously, there's something about the trailer... When I watched it, it was like, oh, come on, not one of these kind of movies again. This is one of these, you know, uh, the coach, you know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. But um, it reminds me of the of my Apple video with all the... Uh, uh, with all the people that are all uh, uh, triggered... Is that the term? <laughs> oh, brother. I think it's hilarious. It's but and everybody's saying that how I'm I can't believe you're saying this about the movie. And I and I keep saying based I just based it in. No, I'm saying it about the trailer. Do you realize that the video is called Whiplash Trailer Um Review? Reviewed by a big band conductor. Okay, so I I used to be a big band conductor. I was just like this guy. For five years, I conducted a big band. I did rehearsals all the time. I got mad at drummers, everything. Would I ever throw a chair at somebody? I mean, come on. I mean, give me a break. And this was in the 80s and the early 90s. Of course not. Of course not. You would get... Um, you would get kicked out, even back then. That's, you would get kicked out. Was it a symbol? What'd he throw at him? I don't even, I didn't even know. I thought he threw his music at him. Um, so, but most of the comments were pretty, uh, pretty innocuous though. I thought it was funny. I, I love it when people get so, so uh, bent out of shape about stuff like that. But I will watch the movie. I thought somebody said he threw a chair at him. Nobody would, if you did anything, people complained. I said this in the video. People complained when I gave, that I gave ear training tests um, that were too hard. So they got the black t shirt from watching my channel. Um, so seriously, I I um I have never met anyone that um 
that has, has ever seen that movie. And not one person I called. Have you seen it? No, I didn't see it. Why would I watch that? But every musician that I know loves the Shreds videos and loves Spinal Tap and loves the Mighty Wind and musical comedies like that. Now, movies that I like, music movies, Beatles movies, I love them. Hard Day's Night, any of those. Um, love those kind of movies, you know. Um, I, you know, stuff on uh, the uh, Tom Dow documentary. The, um, I guess it's a documentary. I'm trying to think of a music movie that I liked. Um... Round Midnight was a good movie. Um, anyway, so, Dean, funny that you should mention what makes this song great, 50th episode. I've been testing songs over the last couple days. Um, and it... Um, you know, I have Fantasy that I tried by Earth, Wind, and Fire, which is, I love, and I really want to do that song. And it got, my, and my friend Dave, I played it on Facebook the other night. I was doing a Facebook live stream, and I was putting the songs into a session. I go, oh, let me try it and see if this works. And I played it, and the video didn't get blocked on Facebook. And But my buddy Dave, Dave Honorado, that's been in some of my videos with Rhett, he said, oh, I didn't know how he knew this. He goes, oh, that's going to get blocked for sure. He said it in the comments. And I said, okay. So I made a little, like, two-minute video on it yesterday. And I put it up uh, unlisted here on this channel. And instantly it got, um, got blocked. So that was going to be my 50th um no, it did get blocked, Martin. Yes, it did get blocked. So I can't do it. Didn't get didn't get blocked on Facebook, but got blocked on YouTube. Immediate immediate block. Except it got blocked and it said it's blocked in 86 countries. When the Zeppelin ones come up, what's up, SB? When the Zeppelin ones come up, it says blocked in 274 countries or whatever. I think I don't know. I think that's pretty much all the countries there are on the earth. But uh, um, but the tracks for that are great. Um, are Genesis blockers? You know, I don't know. I'm not sure. So I was thinking I'm going to do my Jeff Buckley for the, for my fiftieth video, which I already I've got all that. I've got the song that I want to do transcribed, so I can make the video immediately. Uh, I don't have the master takes, but I love the song. And there's only four tracks in it. It's only two guitars, bass, and drums. Um, what's up, Nari? So, um, if the live stream gets copyrighted, do they remove it or do you lose, lose it on Facebook? On Facebook, um, it takes it down. Same thing, Ryan. does. It, it actually, it does. Um. You know what? At the drive-in. Ooh, that's a great... I, I never know how to say your name. Meshuga Pathonatina Tia. Why can't you have... Meshuga, why can't you have an easier name than that? Um, you know, I have one-armed scissors that I really would like to do. Um, that would be a good... Um, Meshig is okay. There you go. Um, I think that uh, that at the drive-in would be really cool. I think that One Arm Scissors is a great song. I think that would be a. Uh, um, I think that would be a cool fiftieth one to do. I would love to interview Christopher Guest. Oh my God, that would be amazing. Um. <clears throat> America, Simon and Garfunkel, came out 50 years ago. Is it 50 years ago today it came out? Back to the past year? Wow. Are REM blockers? I don't know about that. Um, 
Beato book in tabs. Beato book will be in tabs eventually. Give me give me a month or so, a couple months. And anybody that has it, you know, I'll just give it to you again. So, no biggie. Um, Tom, you love my whiplash. There you go. Awesome. Whatever you do, do a What Makes a Sun Great for Derek and the Diamonds or the Almond Brothers. I have a bunch of Almond Brothers tracks. Um... That are, uh, you know, what's great about Almond Brothers tracks are are the the like the keyboard sounds are amazing. The organ sounds, oh man, so good, so good. Um, matter of fact, those you know, I've used those tracks, like Jessica. Uh, I've re I've I've used them in sessions when I first got them. We, Ken and I, my assistant, set up the B3 and, or the Leslie and mic'd it and tried to mimic those sounds because they sound so good. Because to me, that's really just an amazing organ sound. Um, time for a B3 question. Go ahead, Dean. Um... Tom, you guys have been listening to The Reckoning. Cool. Scott Henderson, wait, December 8th, they're headed to Atlanta for Generation X. I don't even know what that is. Um, ever consider doing Swerve Driver? Joe, Swerve Driver is my favorite band, okay? I'm serious. I love Swerve Driver more than anything. I've been trying to get Adam Franklin on my channel since I had 25,000 subscribers, who's the singer for Swerve Driver. Um, I, he's written me back a number of times. I can't get him to, to I can't commit, get him to commit on this. Um, he, I mean, he wants to do it. He said he would. He doesn't have tracks to um, to Mescalhead, which I would love to do something off that. I could do what makes the song great, Swerve Driver, too, and see. Um, I love their guitar work, man. I could do what makes the song great about Swerve Driver and talk about how much I love Swerve Driver. Um. So, do I have to have the stems to do what makes the sun great? No, I don't have to. I've only had a couple, um, only had a couple songs that I haven't done without it. Elliot, um, I'm around. Uh, I'm around later after dinner. If you want to hit me up, um, you did a quick transcription of Vince Girls when your time is here. Then awesome, Dean. Girl on a motorbike. A change is going to come. There you go. Whoa, we got some Swerve Driver fans on here. I don't know Generation X. What is that? What is Generation X? You hear they're doing a benefit show out in LA in January with many bands performing Chris Cornell's catalog. Who's doing that? Um, chances of an Eddie Van Halen interview. Okay, so I'll tell you some of the things I got coming up. I got a message from Daniel Levitin. Anybody know Daniel Levitin? He wrote, this is your brain on music. Um, he wrote to me because of my why adults can't develop perfect pitch video. And I'm going to be interviewing him in Los Angeles when I'm out there for NAMM which is really exciting. Um, 
along with Lucather and Sinister Gates. I got to talk to Sin. Um... Oh, Vi Malmstein. Oh, that, that's Generation X? Okay. All playing together. Why, what, why do you think it was... Um, I, I can't read that. Let's see. So B3 question. How do you get a grind distorted sound? Is it a drawbar setting or a pedal? Um, usually the distortion, like with, um, if you're talking like a deep purple distortion, that's through a Marshall. That's actually played through a Marshall amp and it's distorted there, but you can get, you can overdrive these depending on how hard you hit the, uh, hit the amp on the, uh, on the Leslie. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So. We'll talk about that. I can demonstrate that. So um, I've got a cool... Talked to an old friend of mine today. Um, yes, Tom, Lindsey Buckingham, amazing guitar player. One of my favorite. Um, I talked to my old friend, Tim, who was the bass player from Jellyfish today that, that I played in a band with. I haven't, I haven't talked to Tim in 10 years, I bet. And um, he lives here in Atlanta, and he is um, going to come over and do my "What Makes This Song Great" Beatles. We we have a I have a I I figured out a way to do the Beatles, uh, and Tim's going to help me out. Um, how how to make my um, He's going to do the McCartney part. So I just got to find the drummer to, to do Ringo. So this video will be a What Makes This Song Great Beatles. Um, so I'm psyched about that. We're doing that next week. Um, Dean, Genesis, I would do, I like Squonk, but I would definitely do Entangled. Um... Do I have that red uh, JG, JG guitar? What's JG guitar? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, right here. I didn't know that that's what it was called, the JG guitar, but man, I love this guitar. How cool is that? See the JG? Love it. Okay, I gotta go here. Um, Cause I gotta get working on my video. I got a new lens for my camera. Um, I wanna see if you notice it. It just came today in the mail. And um, it's, it's amazing how dramatic of a difference it is. Just the lens, that's it. Um, see if you notice it. It's, uh, I, think it's I think it's about a 50% a improvement in my video quality. You'll see it on my next video that I'm gonna be filming in about 10 minutes. All right, you guys are the best. We'll talk later, thank you.